as some of you may know, the 501c3 contract with all the churches was in fact prophesied long ago. Now, yes, many are scoffing at this, claiming it was never prophesied. But if you notice, the only ones that are scoffing are the ones that are in disobedience to the Lord in one or more ways. And so they can't possibly understand prophecy because only the obedient have that blessing. But there's another more valid reason for them, at least, that they do scoff. is because they actually have the 501c3. And so they must mock the prophecy because if they admit it as truth, then they stand exposed. Now, I have a page on the website about this. If you go to the prophecy section, go down to prophecy of today and then just go down to 501c3. And I did a short video, as you see here, it says now on video. And this was some time ago. It's been over 20 years that I've been sharing this information. I also mention it in numerous sermons posted online. And I have mentioned it in more than a few videos along the way. In fact, many years ago when the scoffing began, most assumed people that preach as I do were completely wrong because, yeah, they do admit that they had to join their church with the state in order to get the 501c3, but they repeatedly declared they never had any government powers for doing so. Still, the message we preach continued, and for many years, we in the obedient remnant church declared that those that joined with the state will eventually be given powers from the government, and soon after, they will use those powers to lobby for religious laws that they will eventually use to try and quench the loud cry of truth we, the obedient remnant, have been declaring all along. And yes, they scoffed when they heard us, and some of them even posted their scoffing on their websites and radio broadcasts, and some of them even made videos trying to hide their shame so as to make the prophecy that we were sharing appear as if it was bogus. But then March 7th, 2006 came along, and suddenly all those scoffers clammed up. What happened on that day? Well, as you see here, the churches actually became government agencies. George W. Bush signed it into law on that date, which happens to be the same date of the first Sunday laws, back in 321 AD, by the way. I have a page on the website about that too. But uh, he signs it into law, and here's why most of the scoffers clammed up. Along with the signing of this bill that Lyndon Johnson actually set up way back in 1954 so as to have control over the churches, President Bush declared to all the American people that all 501c3 pastors were now to be considered government agents with the ability to lobby law. So, as the obedient remnant people have been declaring for many years, the 501c3 is not only an image of the beast in Rome, wherein all the churches that have it are now considered a church and state conglomeration, because, I mean, the only way to get the 501c is to incorporate your church with the state. But the pastors now have the ability to actually lobby the law, just as the prophecy of our Lord said they would. With all that said, this means when it comes time to pass the religious laws to try and stop the final message from going forth, the government agents who claim to be pastors will flex their political muscles to try and stop the truth God's remnant people have been proclaiming all along, because it will at this time be emptying their churches. In fact, that's already begun. And now that all this was shared, Check out this short video clip of Donald Trump speaking to a small group in a private setting. Notice how he speaks about Christians in America and how they are now to be considered the largest lobbying group in the nation. And now, yes, he does claim in this video that he's going to remove the 501c3 if he gains the White House. But his own words, just like any other politician, prove otherwise. Because if he removes the 501c3, then the government pastors will no longer have the official right to lobby law as George W. Bush gave them on March 7th, 2006. Check this out. You know, it's interesting. I said, how many Christians are there? Because, you know, we got men, we got women. You cut it in half, we actually have a few more women. But we have far more Christians than we have men or women. So in a way, it's the most powerful lobby. It's the biggest group of people. There you have it. So again, he's obviously a politician. Yeah, yeah, he, I get it. He doesn't bow to special interest money. He's been saying that since day one. And yes, he is a bit of an unorthodox man in how he does things. But the truth is now known. And what I mean by that is even if he never gains office, it doesn't matter who stands in the White House now. Eventually, the government pastors will discover they have the ability to lobby law since 2006. 
Why they never moved on that power beforehand is beyond me. But it is obvious that Trump did make the statement that I'm sure will reach many pastors who will wake up and jump at that golden carrot once they discover the image of the beast that they were prophesied to create has actually been given life, wherein they can now speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The bottom line is this. The 501c3 pastors have created an image to the beast in Rome. They have been building this image since 1954. And now that 52 years has passed, allowing ample time for all the churches to buy into the prophesy contract, the second beast gave life onto the image of the first beast in 2006 to the point the pastors are not only government agents, they now have the power to lobby law just as the prophecy said they would. Thank you for watching. God bless.